Hey guys, it's Andre from the High Performance Academy and I'm here with Alan from Dino Dynamics. Hi Alan, thank you for joining us. Good to meet you Andre. Could you just give us a little bit of uh, background history on what Dino Dynamics is and where you guys came from? Okay, Dino Dynamics started 30 years ago with a couple of guys who built a dyno for a friend uh, rather than import one from the USA and from that they then started to produce uh, dynamometers for a wide range of uh, customers and I took over the company a number of years ago, my wife and I bought it and we've since been developing the brand even further so what we're aiming to do is to make uh, dynos affordable and available to everyone who needs one. There's over 2,000 Dino Dynamics dynos around the world in Australia, New Zealand, the USA, Canada, Europe, UK and uh, the Gulf States. You certainly, your, your name's definitely out there. We see the, the dinos all, all over the place and um, you know it's, it's a well-known brand. You're, you're using rolling road technology and I've always wondered, I, I run a Dynapack hub dyno myself. I, I'm not biased to a brand but um, one of the things I do like with the Dynapack is wheel spin's obviously not an issue. Um, how do you find wheel spin or how do you counter wheel spin on a rolling road? Well what we've done is developed a series of uh, measures for traction systems which actually reduce that capacity for wheel spin. I mean our dynos have uh, tested cars up to two and a half thousand horsepower uh, and we've not had wheel spin and that's because we focus a lot. So I've got engineers in house, I've got software engineers, electronic engineers, we're all focused. How do we make sure a rolling road is comparable to a hub dyno in some of those areas? The beauty about a rolling road, you can get a car on and off quickly, so we had to develop a traction control system which made sure you didn't get wheel spin. The other thing is the knurling, the knurling on the drive rollers. We spent a lot of time developing knurling so that it replicates the road, doesn't give you wheel spin. And would you believe we still actually hand knurl the rollers uh, on, a, on a very big old lathe because we found that's the best way to make sure that you get uh, the right knurling and you don't get slip. Take five hours to knurl one of our rollers but you see the results in things like no wheel slip and the longevity of the, the rollers so you don't get fold in the knurling. Obviously when we're, when we're tuning an engine with aftermarket engine management on it, the data we're getting from the dyno is key. We, we need accurate information about torque and then from there obviously the dyno is calculating horsepower or kilowatts. What are you using as a, as a load um, for the dyno? What's, what's applying the load to the, to the rollers? Well what we've, we've got is, uh, uh, we've got a, co a combination of things. We use eddy current retarders manufactured for us in Spain to our specifications so that we get a very high quality uh, retarder uh, that's it's almost unique uh, in the way it's been designed and built for us. Uh, we make sure then that that retarder is capable of turning it up to 6,000 RPM so that gives you a wheel speed of 250 kilometres an hour and that way you're making sure you can test a car pretty much to its full range. We can build uh, dynos that'll go up to 300 kilometres an hour but they're rather special because it tends to be in the US market they feel they've got to tune in top gear uh, whereas we know in Australia and New Zealand you can tune in third, fourth gear and still get the same outcome. So we've been very conscious to make sure that we can get a car to its maximum power uh, and, and we do. And the other thing we, we've done is very accurate in terms of measuring speed at the roller but also we've developed our own engine taco which enables you to make sure you've got the right engine RPM and of course we can plug into the Haltex, the Motex, the Autronics, any uh, aftermarket ECU which is on CAN bus uh, and also we can plug into the OBD2 ports on a, a standard car because a lot of cars they've just flashed the ECU, the standard ECU well you can plug in and get all the data that's in that e being streamed through that ECU into our software, capture that data, analyse that data and get a better tune. So you can actually take the, the OBD2 data and log it along with your power and torque on the dyno? Absolutely and you can take snapshots right through the whole uh, range of tuning uh, at any interval you want to set so you can see what's happening right through that whole, uh, that whole power band. What, what sort of accuracy or repeatability do you expect to see from one of your dynos? Uh, almost perfect. I mean, these dynos are used by police in a number of states in Australia to measure both speed and horsepower uh, for court work. So they're, they're, we we have we calibrate them. Our calibration system is calibrated by NADA, the National Association of Testing Authorities, 
uh, and then each year they come out and test uh, uh, one of our dinos to make sure that we're building them to the accurate uh, accuracy we say we are. So we're pretty accurate, but we're constantly working on it. We uh, we have them they're self calibrating now, and we can actually go online and check that that calibration is operating as it should. If someone comes and said, I don't think my dyno is you know, accurate anymore, we can go online and we can go back to the original calibration and see if there's any deviation from it. Okay, well that's got to be handy for the workshop owner. Is there a limit with your power absorption unit to how much power you can actually measure through the, the, the wheels? Yeah, look there is, and but it's dependent on the retarder. We, this model we make here, you can get in single retarder or twin retarder. Uh, we can go up to bigger retarders. There's a, an issue when you get to bigger retarders, your actual top speed declines a little. So rather than 250, you're coming back to 225. But a twin retarder model will take 2,500 horsepower. And there's not too many cars around that produce more than that, except drag cars. Uh, and we've done a couple of special dynos for people with drag cars. And it requires also special software, because those cars are accelerating so fast uh, that you've got to make sure you capture all the data in a very short space of time. One thing I just wanted to ask you, your Dino Dynamics dynos use a twin roller system. Um, a lot of the dynos that are common in the US, um, particularly Dynajet, tend to use a single roller as an inertia dyno. What's the difference? Why have you gone with the twin roller? Is there an advantage to using two rollers over one? Yeah, look, there is. It, it ensures two things. One, you, don't, you reduce the capacity for wheel slip, and secondly, that the, the car is being positioned exactly in the right point in the rollers. Because what we want to do is pull the car into those two rollers, position it exactly, and that way it can just then move forward onto the drive roller, so it's just biting in nicely, but still running the rear roller. We actually calculate the inertia being uh, absorbed by the rear roller as well, so you get more accuracy in your power uh, projections and your, and your torque. Uh, and that way you, you, you'll get guarantee you avoid things like wheel slip. I mean, if you do these things properly, the, the power coming out of the car will be fairly accurate. What we've done over the years is we've taken engines, put them on our engine dynos that we manufacture, measure those, and then we, we put them on a car and we've calculated the transmission losses on a car like this, on a sister car to this, to make sure that we've got all our calculations right. Because we also, uh, our dynos will calculate in, in essence, what's well, a theoretical flywheel power, but it's born of a lot of research and data to make sure it's as close as you can to getting the real flywheel power. That was actually going to be my next question, was uh, the, the age-old debate about converting rear wheel horsepower or kilowatts into, into flywheel power. So the Dyno Dynamics Dyno has a built-in function to do that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it does. It, and, and it comes about, I said, through a lot of research and development. My argument always is, I mean, it's common in the UK, they want flywheel power. My argument is you really want to know what you're putting on the road and flywheel power can be a bit bit hit and miss. I mean when we were doing the, the you know, Falcon engines for example, we could never get to the right power that the manufacturer was saying they were getting out of them. We then discovered they'd stripped everything off it, you know, so no ancillaries or no auxiliaries uh, and that's where they got their power. So it's a, you know, what are you actually measuring when you get flywheel power if you're going off the manufacturer's specs? From my point of view, the real issue is what, what's the rubber put into the road? How's a car being powered forward? How's it being propelled forward? And that's the key figure you want. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more from my own tuning. One other question I wanted to touch on is with the accuracy of the dynos, there's always some operators out there that are a little bit more dodgy and just want to give their customers a bigger number. Have you got any measures in place with the Dino Dynamics range to prove to the customer, the, the end user, that um, the numbers that they're getting on their dyno sheet are actually accurate and the, the tuner hasn't tweaked the dyno numbers? Yeah, look, uh, we, we have a feature we call shootout, uh, which if you do the car in the shootout mode, it replicates every time exactly what the conditions are. But we also have other features, like we have an auto weather station, uh, and that you know adjusts for humidity, pressure and temperature, but all the data's recorded. And I mean, uh, there are ways you can cheat, and, and when people bring you know, horsepower figures to me, all I have to say, give me the give me the graph sheet, give me the data sheet, and I'll tell you what's really happened. And often you'll see people, you know, upping the inlet air temperature, for example. I mean, you know, 50 degrees centigrade in the middle of winter of New Zealand was not a temperature you'd expect to see. And often you'll see figures like that. People are trying to, you know, fudge it. What we've done is put a feature in our, our system which says, this is the way to do it. And so if a customer goes to a workshop and says, I want to make sure I've got an accurate reading on their power, they should put it in shootout mode and put the, the type of car in, etc. 
and then it will replicate exactly every time when you put that car on that dyno. Yeah, that sounds like a really good feature. One last thing I wanted to talk about, the dyno you've got here on display is a dyno tech. So this is your entry level product, which is, which is reasonably recent, I believe. Yeah, look, we, about two and a half years ago, with the change in the market, with the global financial crisis, people wanted dynos, but they found it a bit, bit high price, being honest about it. So what we did was we sat down and went back to the drawing board. And the way we manufacture this dyno, the way we designed it, uh, was, was all aimed at giving up people the opportunity to get an entry level dyno. This dyno, which is fully operational with a computer and everything, is 32,000. Then you can option it up. So you can actually get to our premium level dyno by what I call our plug and play method. So you can get your auto weather station, you can get your, uh, you can get your engine data modules, you can get your onboard diagnostic, but all the things that you can get in the premium model are here. Uh, and this now is outselling the other one sort of five to one because it's such a good dyno. It runs all the same running gears, so the same retarder, the same rollers, bearings, couplings, etc. is the premium model. It's just, uh, we, we made it differently. We make them in lots of 20. Uh, so I get them manufactured in, in bulk, you might say. We're running it through the latest laser cutting machines, using the latest technology to manufacture them. And I actually think in some ways they're a better dyno than uh, our other one uh, because uh, they're so simple, uh, they're straightforward. And we also develop new software, much more user-friendly software, so that a person using a dyno for the first time is not going to be bamboozled and confused. They can pick it up very quickly. No, that sounds great. I mean, that's, uh, it's an amazing price point and yeah, it sounds like it's an excellent product. Look, um, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today, Alan. If people do want to find out more about your product, where should they go to see more? Just go on to uh, www.dino.com.au uh, and uh, you'll find all the points you can contact us there. We'll be coming over to New Zealand shortly with the Dynatech doing a tour around to show people the product, but also to... Uh, catch up with all our customers in New Zealand who've got our DD450 series and to make sure all their dinos are working well because it's a very reliable product but we want to make sure we look after our customers in New Zealand. That sounds great. Thanks again, Alan. My pleasure, Andre. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.